Hey guys, how's it going? This is Fixer Med, and in today's video, I'm going to be running through the differences and similarities between the new Anki algorithm versus the old Anki algorithm. The new algorithm is called FSRS, the old algorithm was called SuperMemo2. A lot of folks have been having questions on which algorithm is right for them, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have that answer. I'm going to be going into great detail about this, so sit back and enjoy the presentation. So, the FSRS algorithm is short for the Free Spaced Repetition Scheduler. It was a method that's built upon a variant of the DSR model. DSR stands for Difficulty, Stability, and Retrievability. This model served as a framework for predicting memory retention and optimizing the scheduling of review sessions for effective learning. So what that means is it wanted you to get the highest level of memorization with the lowest amount of review sessions. Let's go ahead and break down the key components. So the first component we're going to be looking at is retrievability. Retrievability refers to the probability of successfully recalling a piece of information from memory. In the context of FSRS, it serves as a crucial metric for determining how well a particular item is retained in memory. A higher retrievability value indicates a higher likelihood of successful recall during review sessions. So this means getting questions right over and over again means you have a very high level of retrievability. Getting them wrong over and over again when you're doing your Anki reviews means you have a low retrievability. Next component we'll be looking at is stability. Stability represents the interval at which the retrievability of a piece of information reaches a certain threshold, typically set at 90%. In other words, stability indicates the duration of time after which an item is expected to be 90% recallable. This interval is a key factor in determining when to schedule subsequent review sessions for optimal memory retention. So with a feature like Advanced Auto Forward or the add-on that adds a buzz after a certain amount of time, I forgot the exact name of it at the moment, but I'll be covering it in a later video. That refers to the time it takes you to get to retrieving the answer. Next we have difficulty. Difficulty is a subjective measure of how challenging it is to recall a specific piece of information. In the FSRS algorithm, difficulty is quantified on a scale ranging from one to 10 with higher values indicating greater difficulty. This parameter helps adjust the scheduling of review sessions based on the perceived complexity of the material. Then we have grade. This isn't part of the DRS model or DSR model. This is just the grade is a rating assigned to an item often based on its performance during review sessions using tools like Anki. It reflects the learner's perceived mastery or familiarity with the material. Grades can influence the scheduling of future review sessions with items receiving lower grades potentially requiring more frequent reinforcement. Guys, this is just again, hard, good, and easy. Those are the four grades you'll see in Anki. So just keep that in mind while going through this presentation. Moving on. So the pros of the FSRS algorithm, main pro is efficiency. It helps you enhance your study efficiency and retention rate by employing personalized and dynamic scheduling strategies. Unlike traditional fixed interval scheduling methods, FSRS adapts its review schedule based on individual performance and the inherent difficulty of each piece of information. This personalized approach ensures that learners spend more time reviewing content that requires reinforcement, thus maximizing the effectiveness of study sessions. Dynamic scheduling. Key strengths of FSRS, dynamic scheduling capabilities. The algorithm continuously recalculates stability and difficulty metrics based on user performance, allowing it to adapt and optimize the timing of review sessions in real time. The dynamic nature ensures that review intervals are tailored to each learner's specific needs and learning pace. By dynamically adjusting scheduling parameters, FSRS optimizes the distribution of review sessions, thereby facilitating more efficient and targeted learning experiences. So basically, it's not this typical old 246 or 3912 or whatever you get with the old algorithm. This one goes out of its way to adapt and help you review your hard material more often and the easy ones not as often. Less reviews. This is what most students like hearing. Significant advantage of employing the FSRS algorithm, high potential to reduce the overall number of daily reviews while maintaining a very high retention rate. 
Studies have shown that utilizing FSRS can lead to a notable decrease ranging from 20% to 30% in the number of review sessions required per day compared to traditional scheduling methods. Despite this reduction in review frequency, FSRS maintains a retention rate of 90%, which you can set in the settings. So this highlights its effectiveness in optimizing learning schedules and minimizing unnecessary review sessions. This reduction in review workload can translate to significant time savings for learners, allowing them to allocate their study time more efficiently and focus on mastering challenging concepts. Moving on. The cons of the FSRS algorithm. Main con I've heard from students is complexity. One of the primary criticisms leveled against the FSRS algorithm is its perceived complexity, particularly regarding the calculation of difficulty. Difficulty, a key parameter in the FSRS model, lacks a precise definition, sorry for butchering that, and is determined using a set of heuristics rather than a comprehensive understanding of human memory processes. This reliance on heuristic methods may introduce subjectivity and variability into the difficulty assessment, potentially leading to inconsistencies in scheduling and review intervals. Moreover, the lack of a clear and well-defined metric for difficulty could impede users' understanding of how the algorithm operates and how to interpret its recommendations effectively. As a result, the perceived complexity of the FSRS algorithm may pose challenges for users seeking a straightforward and intuitive approach to space repetition scheduling. Moving on. SM2 algorithm. This is the old Anki algorithm that many of you are familiar with. This is the one that comes packaged by default in Anki. So, SM2 algorithm originating in the late 1980s and developed for SuperMemo served as the foundational framework for space repetition methods used in Anki and similar applications. Space repetition algorithms like SM2 designed to optimize learning and memory retention by scheduling review sessions based on the difficulty and timing of previous reviews. So key features, initial interval, SM2 establishes an initial in review interval of one day following the initial presentation of a piece of information. This means hitting good two times on Anki if you're using the stock settings. After this first review, this interval extends to six days. This gradual spacing of review intervals is a fundamental aspect of space repetition, allowing learners to reinforce their memory over time and maximize retention. Control over learning steps. Anki, which uses the SM2 algorithm, offers users full control over the length of initial learning steps. This customization allows learners to tailor their learning experience to their individual preferences and needs, enabling more effective acquisition and retention of knowledge. Answer choices in Anki's implementation of the SM2 algorithm. Users are presented with four choices when answering review cards as opposed to the six choices offered by the original SuperMemo software. This simplified response format streamlines the review process and reduces cognitive load for users, making it easier to engage with the material and provide accurate feedback on their comprehension. Failed choice. Unlike the SuperMemo implementation, Anki's version of the SM2 algorithm features only one failed choice when answering review cards rather than three. The simplification of response options further enhances the user experience by re reducing decision complexity and facilitating faster review sessions. So, nice overview of the old algorithm. Moving on, let's talk about the pros of the SM2 algorithm. So customizability, Key benefits of the old Anki algorithm is its customizability, offering users opportunities to tailor their learning experience according to their preferences and needs. By providing a balance between simplicity and flexibility, the SM2 algorithm allows users to adjust various parameters to add complexity while retaining a high degree of control over their learning process. This level of customization empowers learners to adapt the space repetition system to suit their individual learning styles, pacing, and goals fostering a more personalized and effective learning experience. Control over learning steps. Anki's implementation of the SM2 algorithm grants users full control over the length of initial learning steps, enhancing the adaptability and effectiveness of the learning process. This control enables users to fine tune the duration of each learning step according to the complexity and familiarity of the material, allowing for a gradual and optimized approach to learning. By adjusting the length of initial learning steps, users can strike a balance between efficient acquisition 
of new information and customized or in sustainable long-term retention, maximizing the effectiveness of their study sessions. Moving on. The cons of the SM2 algorithm, low interview H word. One notable criticism often associated with the standard Anki algorithm is the phenomenon known as low interval H word. This term describes a situation where a card repeatedly fails to be recalled during review sessions, leading to the card becoming stuck in a cycle of very short review intervals. As a result, learners may find themselves repeatedly encountering and struggling with the same difficult cards in quick succession without adequate spacing between review sessions to facilitate effective learning and retention. This can be frustrating and demotivating for learners, potentially hindering their overall learning progress and causing them to feel overwhelmed by the volume of challenging material requiring frequent review. Moving on. So comparing FSRS and SM2 for you guys to make your decision. FSRS strengths, efficiency, dynamic scheduling, less reviews, FSRS weaknesses, complexity, SM2 strengths, classic algorithm strengths, I should say, customizability, control over learning steps, SM2 weaknesses, low interview H word. Considerations for choosing between which algorithm to use. It's for, so for study habits, FSRS is a definite yes if you prefer personalized and dynamic scheduling. Classic algorithm SM2 if you want more control over your learning steps. Complexity, FSRS is more complex due to heuristic use. SM2 is much simpler to use. Review frequency, FSRS, this reduces reviews per day while maintaining your retention rate. SM2 offers less control over review frequency, so you have more reviews typically. Customizability, FSRS is not as customizable as of right now. SM2 provides more options for customization. So pros and cons here and there, but if you just want lower re reviews with more retention, I would just use FSRS. That, that, that seems to be the overall end point for most medical students is to reduce their reviews while maintaining retention rate. So with this video being made in mind for medical students and language learners that have a lot of cards to learn. That's what I would recommend. So moving on, what does this all mean? Like I was saying earlier, FSRS, if you just want to have less reviews with higher retention that you can set in the settings, I made a whole guide on how to set up the Anki FSRS algorithm for your Anki program. So if you have no idea what any of this means, just go ahead and watch that video instead of this one. Just go through it, you'll have less reviews, you can retain 97% of the information, and it's a very nice tool to utilize to aid in your studies. It shouldn't be the only tool you use in your studies since you can't make it through med school with just Anki, you need to utilize question banks, you need to utilize free recalling, you need to utilize multiple study methods to actually get the vast amount of information to stick in your head. Same thing with language learners. You can't just use Anki to speak and write a language. You need to speak it with other people. You need to write it out. You need to watch movies. You need to watch TV serials for the language to hit in your head and you're able to understand it. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more Anki tutorials and more Anki explanations. This was my first time making a Anki explanation guide. I put a lot of details in it because I know my viewers like having details and like having comprehensive understanding of material. So I can also make abridged versions on shorts. So let me know what format you'd like to see moving forward. But anyways, this is Fixer Med signing off. Be sure to have a great day, everyone. Good luck studying and goodbye.